James Held at Eiffel TV MTK Global with me. I've got Peter McDonough. We're at the Fury Gym today in Bolton Fury HQ, home of champions. Firstly, how are you, Pete? Yeah, very good, James. Just uh, last session, Thursday, got the weigh-in tomorrow. Just done 12 hard runs, half a, half a minute's rest. You're looking in pretty good nick, to be fair. You look like you've, you've put it in this camp. Yeah, um, every night about 9 o'clock, Pete shut the shutter so it stops me going to McDonald's. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a concentration camp. The time you've been out of the ring, you've had time to refocus, refocus your energies. You've come back fully focused now to, to, to put on a good performance. Yeah, most definitely. I just want to prove uh, everyone wrong, all those doubters wrong that thought, you know, when I got the band, that, you know, I'd be finished. It's made me come back stronger, better, better looking. Time off, uh, obviously not sparring. Um, but yeah, feel good, feel ready to go. Mm. Uh, Tell us a little bit about the opponent you're in with on Saturday. Uh, I've only seen a picture of him. Nothing on the internet about him. He's eight and zero, unbeaten, five knock five knockouts. Obviously, he can punch a bit, but uh, as you know, transit man what knocked me down. So nothing he's doing to me, you know. Another fight potentially to get you higher up in the European rankings. Is that the route that you're trying to sort of trying to aspire to, Pete? Yeah, so I want to win the European title next after this one. Um, you know, I'm not in this camp to mess around and fight bums. I want to fight real fighters, which I've done on my career. But uh, obviously, I've got a training camp now. You know, usually I take it at three days notice, four days notice. I've even took fights at two hours notice, sitting in the McDonald's. You know, uh, Frank Maloney rang me up, now Kelly, has he turned into a woman? Um, yeah, I take it, you know, I, I take a fight at two hours notice, gone down there, bashed the kid up, been paid, and left, you know. But uh, now it's time to take it serious. I'm getting a little bit older now. I've just started to mature properly now. Um, 40 years old, that's when life starts. As you mentioned, like a fine wine, you've just turned 40. You're on a, a good run as well, 11 fights unbeaten with a with a eight-month imposed ban thrown yeah. in, in between the mix as well. So do you feel that you're hitting the, the peak form of your career now? This is sort of the best version of McDonald that we can see. Yeah, definitely. I mean, mentally better, mentally stronger, down to a uh, my mind man, the leprechaun. Now, I've, uh, heard, I've heard some stuff about this, this mind stuff. I'm a little yeah. bit sceptical at times, to say the least. Can we, can we bring Rory in and get, yeah. him, get him to have a little bit I'll of a chat? Will that be all right? Absolutely. Rory, how are you? Very good, very well. Can you put the camera down a little bit, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Talk to great. us a little bit about some of the stuff you do with Peter McDonough and, and how, how this has sort of come about. Yeah, well, hypnosis with Peter. Um, also some meditation as well, and basically just stuff to get him sharp and on point. But he's a pleasure to work with. He's someone who's already got a very strong mind. I'm just bringing out the... Best qualities there, really. Mm. Is he someone that was easy to, to to hypnotize? Someone to make positive? Was he was he hard to work with? Had, had no, very very really easy. I mean, he's someone work. who's uh, when he gets in the zone, he totally can. Basically, if he tells himself something, he believes it. So his mind is very open to someone else giving him a suggestion as well. So yeah, a pleasure to work with. Could you give us a slight demonstration of some of the stuff that maybe not with Pete you would do because that's obviously a bit personal, but just yep. some of the stuff we can do if we can zoom not, in on. Not on your right head here, right now, but um, unfortunately it has to be a bit kind of um, has to be some sort of trade secrets. Okay, now I'll get that. I'll zoom back out then. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I appreciate that, Rory. Cool. So yeah, Peter, alongside the hypnosis, you seem you seem like you've added some good dietrician. Would that be Peter Fury's sort of input with the training and nutrition and stuff? Do you know what it is, James? Right. You know, I talk a lot, I say a lot, you know, but a lot of it's tongue in cheek. But uh, like I say, my career, I've gone through my career. I ain't listened to one trainer ever in my life. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've been with Jimmy Tibbs, Danny Vaughan, uh, John Breen. I mean, I, I can name them all day long, Adam Booth. I've been with everyone. But uh, not, not that I don't rate them as trainers. I think they're brilliant trainers. You know, I just, I was that person that I didn't listen to them. But you know what, I'll be honest with you, I'm frightened to death of Peter Fury. And uh, seriously, when he says something, yeah, I'll do it, you know. It, it's either you do it or you go home. I mean, my last camp, I had a 10-week camp. I was away in, in, a, in the middle of nowhere, in a field. Yeah, no internet, no TV, no nothing. All I was doing was reading books. And it's hard to read when you, you have to learn to read and you can't even read. I looked at a lot of pictures. But uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I know how much I want this now. And like I say, people say, when are you going to finish your age? When are you going to finish? What are you going to do? Listen. Every fight can be your last fight, you know? Mm. But it's how, you, it's how you get on in fights, you know? If I get out of the ring this week and Peter goes to me, you know what, Peter, I think you've, you've had enough and, you know, that was the hardest fight you've had and this and that. I respect him and I'll, I'll return it in. I'm a clever man, I'm not a stupid man. I won't keep going on and carrying on. I will end my career here at Fury Gym and, and Peter's been in my corner when I ain't even trained for fights, you know? And I respect him for that, for, you know, taking me up and being in my corner. But now, 
I'm trained properly. And the confidence now that's oozing out of me, the confidence that was out of me when I had two hours notice and I've just been in the pub. You know what I mean? So when I've had a 10-week camp, I believe, honestly believe, I can run through the wall. You know what I mean? And if I didn't, I'd, I'd, do, I'd go again. I'd keep trying, you know? Let's talk about some current events in boxing. I know you're never short of a few opinions on stuff. Firstly, what did you make of David Hayes' defeat to Tony Bellew? <sighs> Two, I made that up. When the fight was made, when the fight uh, was made, I thought, oh, you know what? David Hayes might have a little bit left. He might be able to, you know, do something. Do you know on his way to the ring here, yeah, he was walking on his heels, right? And he got in the ring, and as soon as he started moving around the ring, he never even, he never even jumped as he got in the ring. See the difference that Tony Bell you got in the ring? I mean, whether Sky Pundits were told not to say nothing, I don't know. But not one of them picked up on it that David A's leg was still gone from the first fight. His leg was still gone. So I think he should retire from boxing. You know, he's had a good career. You know what I mean? He could give me a few quid, really, because the money he's had out of it. But, uh, you know, he's had another big, big payday. And um, I think he should retire from boxing because th there's no need to con the British public now. You know, I respect him. He was a great fighter years ago. He had some good fights, but now it's time for him to retire. We, we've seen sort of with the World Boxing Super Series announcing the second season. The Ali Trophy. We're still waiting for the Ali, Shades of yeah. Ali Trophy to be, to be sort of announced for the final. Yeah. The, what's going to happen and stuff. What yeah. are your thoughts on the whole Groves? final against Callum Smith? Well, my thoughts are on it. There's rumours going around that Groves is going to pull out, obviously, through injury. Groves is a fantastic fighter, you know, and a great career. But uh, they're talking about putting Chris Tennis Ball, Eubank in, back into the show. I mean, I'm not being funny, but rest his soul, Ali. Ali had turned in his grave because he was a legend, at Muhammad Ali. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, you know, I can't understand why, you know, they're going to put him back in. I'll tell you what they should do. I'll tell you exactly what they should do. Callum Smith has got to the final. Give Callum Smith half of the money, yeah? Not bo don't have him boxed, give him half of the money, and the other half of the money, give to injured fighters. P people that, you know, can't fight anymore. And things like that, I think they should give the other half of the money to that. You know, and give, the, give Callum Smith the trophy as the champion. But, if you're gonna put Chris Tennis Ball Eubank back in there, yeah, it's a waste of time. Quite unfortunate as well, obviously, it's not just the super middleweights. We're waiting to see news on Yusik Gassiev as well, what the outcome's going to be I with mean, that. Listen, the cruiserweights is second to none, isn't it? The cruiserweight one's unbelievable, you know what I mean? You know, that's, a, that's a proper alley trophy, you know what I mean? Mm. You know, but like I say, if they, if they put Eubank back in, I think it's just going to absolutely dilute the trophy. It's going to dilute it. You know what I mean? If they're going to do that, they might as well call it, I don't know, the Peter Buckley trophy or something. Moving away from, from that and stuff, this Saturday, stablemate Huey Fury in action against Sam Sexton as he aims to capture that Lonsdale title. What's Huey look like? What's the mood look like within, within the gym and the camp and stuff? Um, yeah, he's, he's trained hard. You know, he seems like he's got a different outlook now on his uh, career. You know, he knows he was robbed for the world title. Whatever opinion someone wants to have, watch the fight and score the fight. You know, it's boxing and it's about hitting someone and not being it. Listen. Yui could have thrown a lot more punches and made the fight more convincingly. But still losing it by 10 rounds, he was never going to get the decision. If he chinned Joseph Parker, they'd have disqualified him. You know, so at the end of the day, you know, he's just got to move on now. That's gone. You know, it's time to move on now. Get Sam Sexton out of the way, you know, which is an hard fight. It's not an easy fight. He's only been beat by two good fighters. But get Sam Sexton out of the way and then move back into world, uh, world contention. Some big fights out there in the heavyweight division for the winner of Fury Sexton, so no doubt that's a big incentive. Fury wants to get back to world level, so should be make for a good good encounter. Yeah, most definitely. Listen, if he can, the thing is, he goes out, knocks Sexton out, does it in style. Who's to say you don't find Joshua next? You know, Parker made Joshua look ordinary. Come, let's be honest. Do you know what I mean? Yui caught him with a lot better shots than what Joshua caught him. With. Well, Joshua couldn't hit him, could he with the right hand? You know, he couldn't hit him with the right hand. Where Yui, every time he threw it, he hit him. We just never threw it enough. But uh, that's what he's been working on this camp, and that's what we're going to see come Saturday night. What have you made of the Joshua Wilder 50 million offer and stuff? What I make of that fight is a load of rubbish. Because let me tell you something. No one wants that fight to happen. Let's be honest, no one wants it to happen. Because they know it could be an accident waiting to happen, you know? But, uh, I, I don't know. Let's just fight. We'll just fight. It don't need 50 million. 10 million a piece is enough, isn't it? Jesus, and give me the other 30. All right, well, look, it's good to see you back in action. We know it's a big, big fight for you for this on your return and stuff. Yeah. Wish you the best of luck and we'll catch you at the weigh-in. Peter yeah. Donna, thank you very Listen, much. Listen, I'd like to say thanks as well to all my sponsors. 
Um, firstly, uh, Capital Seafood. Uh, Capital Seafood. Uh, they've looked after me for a few years now. Obviously, the management team at MTK, uh, Hilton, Hilton, Liverpool, CMP, Rory, who does all my mind work. What's the notebook up again? Advanced Hypnosis Life. Uh, and um, yeah, no, and obviously, the biggest thanks to uh, Peter Fury, obviously, for taking me on and looking after me for 10 weeks because it's got to be hard for anyone. My missus is happy I've left. Uh, and obviously, um, Mick Hennessy for giving me the opportunity on Channel 5. And uh, I'd like to say thanks to Savannah. I've been making her dinners every day. I've actually lit me with the uppercut. <laughs> nah, cheers, James. Thank you very much. Peter Madonna, thank you very much for singing your song. Nice one. Appreciate it. <laughs>